Welcome to another installment of Garage Science. By request, I'm doing a more thorough walkthrough of the Creation Workshop software. If you want to see how to create a STL model or add supports using Mesh Mixer, check out the video I made on how to prepare a model. I link to it in the description. Let's get started. Creation Workshop is open source software that is free to download and use. I've provided download links in the video description in case you don't already have this software. The software can be used with FDM and resin printers, making it versatile, but being open source and free makes it not overly refined, but I digress. First thing we need to do is open our STL file. Go to the folder button and navigate to your file. This is a Rook STL I downloaded off of Thingiverse. I provided the link to it in the video description. It is shown here in the 3D viewing window where you can rotate around and view every angle of the model. The view bar shows what we are currently looking at. I'll go over these other tabs in detail later. On the right you can see all the different ways we can manipulate the model and the 3D view window. And of course in the top left there are buttons for opening files, saving files, save files are not STL but Creation Workshop scene files. You can connect your printer, disconnect your printer, slice your model, as well as start, pause, and stop your print. For the four tabs there's the 3D view, the slice view, the control tab, and the configure tab. Before we cover those, let's look at what we can do in the 3D view. I'm going to set up this model to be printed with supports. So I'll click on the plus sign next to the 3D view window, and here I can change how I want my supports to be generated. But we need to move our model around before we can worry about supports. Additionally, there is an undo redo button in case you get the sudden urge to spam Ctrl Z. You can also home your 3D view and go into a top down layout view. Under Scene, you can copy and delete models by using the plus and minus buttons, as well as clear your 3D view of all models with the X button. Under Object Info, you can see your selected object stats. The first two items give you volume and estimated cost. The cost is only calculated if you input the cost per volume of your material. I'll show you where you can do this later. The two number items, I'm not really sure what they are. The Creation Workshop model doesn't say what they are. The min-max lines tell you where your model is located in the build volume and the overall size of your model is shown last. These dimensions are the length, width, and height of the red box around your object. Under Move, you can relocate your model in the build volume. The values for X, Y, and Z are the increment sizes for moving the model. One means one millimeter of movement in the direction you select. 10 means 10 millimeters of movement in the direction you select. The three buttons up top let you force your model to make contact with the bottom of the build volume, center your model, and you can lay out multiple models inside the build volume. Now because the bottom of the model has a large cutout, I don't want there to be a void full of liquid resin as the model prints, since I'll be adding a support raft. So I'll be adding supports, but to do this, I need to move the model up in order to make room for the supports. To do that, I'll move the model up 5 millimeters, giving me plenty of room to add nice dense supports. Under Mirror, you can mirror your model along one of the three axes. This does not create another object, but reorients the object you have selected. Under Scale, you can convert dimensions, or scale the whole model, or scale along a single axis. I want to print a giant rook, so I'm going to enlarge this to 200%. You can see, though, that after I did this, the distance from the bottom of the build volume to the model double with the size of the model. I just need to go back and subtract the extra 5 millimeters so I'm not further away than necessary. Now under Rotate, you can rotate the model a selected number of degrees, similar to what we did with Move. Under View Options, you can select various ways to view the 3D model. Also the Console View option is here, which is handy while you have a print running because it will tell you which layer is printing, making it easy to stay up to speed on the status of your print. Now let's generate the supports. First thing we're going to do is add a support raft. This raft creates a base on the bottom of the build volume that is slightly bigger than your model in its X and Y dimensions. Next you can add individual supports or select an automatic support method. For automatic supports you can do beta nails that is exactly what the name suggests or adaptive which will let Creation Workshop decide exactly how to support each overhang. Adaptive works decent and is good if your model has a slightly more complicated structure but in my experience, Mesh Mixer creates better supports for complicated overhangs. 
we'll be using bed of nails for this print. Next you can select your support spacing. This effectively determines how dense your supports will be. Finally we're going to click generate supports. Now you can also view overhangs by angle simply by entering an angle and clicking the eyeball button under view. Alright, so we have our model set up. Now to set up the slicing configurations. And here you can see we have a very dense uniform support structure. By doing this, the void under the model will be able to drain resin as it is printed. Alright, so we have our model set up. Now to set up the slicing configurations. Hang in there, we're about halfway there. Under the configure tab, you can change the settings for your machine and slicing profile. You can have multiple machine presets. And to my knowledge, there's no limit to the number of presets you can have, so go crazy. For the Draken 3D Printer by 3D Factory, you can download pre-made machines from their website. The link is provided in the video description. There is also a pre-sliced model that can be downloaded from the same page. So back to Creation Workshop. I'm using the 82 micron resolution machine settings. If you are printing with the same computer you are preparing the model in, then your available display should include the DLP projector and should show up as a 1920 by 1080p display. The projector should be Display 2. If the Display 2 doesn't automatically show up under Configured Displays, then you only need to double click under the Available Displays to add it. You'll notice under Output Resolution it says 80 microns, and that is because I have tweaked the build volume just a little based off of my projector settings. On the right you can select the appropriate machine controls for your printer. If you over-select items that your printer does not have, then those features will just be non-functioning in the control tab. For projector control, you can enable serial communication with the projector and configure the port. The default port configurations are most likely correct, but if they aren't, you can change your COM port and baud rate here. Another less known function in Creation Workshop is Enable Mask. The user manual doesn't talk about it, but this is a function that allows you to upload a screen to overlay over your DLP's projected images to make the light distribution uniform. The overall effect of this will lower your effective lumens, but will keep your model curing evenly. I have yet to play with this feature. I most likely will at some point in the future when my projector is older and the light distribution is much less uniform. Next, for user parameters, I have never used these. The user manual again doesn't provide information on this. If you have experience with this page, let me know in the comments. Before we leave this portion of the setup, we want to apply changes. Then we'll go take a look at the slicing profile. Similar to the machine configurations, you can have multiple slicing profiles, which is very handy if you're using different resins or regularly print in different resolutions. I just modify the base print profile for each model. At the bottom, you can enter your resin cost per liter, and notice that you can add multiple kinds of resin as well. Next, in the middle of the screen, you can change your slice and exposure settings. Slice thickness is where you can adjust your z-axis resolution. A higher resolution here will increase the print time. DLP printers are unique in that size and the x and y-axis don't affect print speed. Only size in the z-axis can affect print speed and small slices means your model is divided into more pieces meaning more print time. Exposure time is the general exposure time that will be used for all but your bottom layers. Bottom layer exposure is exactly what it sounds like. I usually make this at least double my normal layer exposure time. Number of bottom layers determines how many initial layers of your model will be printed with the bottom exposure time. Anti-aliasing helps smooth out your model, but can be detrimental if you have small details, so be careful with this setting. If I don't have it off, I usually have it set at 1.5, which seems to work well. You don't want to enable slice outlines for a resin printer, there's really no reason to do this that I know of. And if you want your image reflected along the X or Y axis, you can select that. This only changes the model's final orientation on the build platform, depending on how you want your model printed, or if you have a text that you need printed in a particular way, you can mirror along the appropriate axis. I have only reflect on Y axis checked so that the origin in the 3D view of Creation Workshop is in the back left corner of my VAT. Now on the right side, you can control the timing of your peel and lift action. The lift and sequence time is the amount of time the printer waits before projecting another image on the projector. If this time is too short, your projector may display the next layer before your build platform returns the part to the bottom of the resin tank. The values here are fairly self-explanatory. Z-lift distance is how much the build platform raises after each layer. 
Z-lift speed is how fast the build platform will traverse the Z-lift distance. Z-bottom speed actually doesn't show up in the G-code by default for my printer, and the user manual doesn't describe its purpose. But I suppose if you want to tweak your peel G-code, you have the option of an unused speed setting. Z-retract speed is how fast your build platform will return to the VAT for the next layer. Slide tilt value is there if you have a tilting VAT. The Draken has a tilt peel mechanism, but the G-code for the server motor is not controlled by this setting. Build direction selection is there for if you have a top-down or bottom-up printer. At some point my printer began printing as if it were a bottom-up printer, even though I had top-down selected. The quick fix without troubleshooting a software bug was to change the build direction to bottom-up. Finally, for the export options, you want to export to CWS if you intend to send the file to a Raspberry Pi or similar piece of hardware. You don't need to export SVG or Preview, so leave those as none. I imagine the SVG exporting option is there for FDM printers. I'll be setting up this print to be printed from my laptop for anyone that doesn't already have Raspberry Pi set up. Now let's take a look at the G-Code page. This could be a little intimidating if you haven't had experience with any kind of coding before. But in a nutshell, G-Code is just a giant list of commands. The printer goes down the list of commands one by one until it runs through the whole list. Creation Workshop very conveniently structures this so that you can edit the cookie cutter pieces of code that will be used to generate the thousands of lines of G-Code needed to print your part. There is a startup sequence of G-Code, a pre-slice sequence, which I have left empty, lift sequence commands, and a shutdown sequence of G-Code commands. You can go through the user manual and the respective G-Code commands for your printer, which should be available through the manufacturer, to create a G-Code cheat sheet so it is easy to copy and paste in code. I derived the majority of my cheat sheet from the support forums for the Draken printer, and the link is provided in the video description. Here you can see my cheat sheet, and for my own reference, I've pasted in the link from where I derived it. Moving on, we'll go to the control tab where we can finally take control of our printer. Now depending on how your printer is set up, it is possible that you could have trouble making an initial connection since the COM port you're using may be used by another background program. The quick and dirty way is to open Arduino and start the serial monitor. I have found that this acts like a nightclub bouncer and forces itself into the COM port. Once you open the monitor, just close it and immediately connect your printer. Again, this may not be an issue. My laptop is a bit older and there is some ghostly program keeping me from connecting to the printer right off the bat. Again, this may not be an issue for you, but it's something to watch out for. Once you connect, you'll notice that a new window pops up called From DLP. This window simply shows what the projector is currently displaying. Warning, do not minimize this window, especially when your computer is printing. If you do, your projector will display your desktop and cure a layer of resin the size of your build platform. If you're wondering how I know this, let's just say I have a 3D Benchy model with a big old flat layer of plastic running through the center of it. So now we have connected to our printer. Let's check for signs of life. On the z-axis, control select a downward distance to send the build platform. You can't see in the screen capture, but my build platform is moving down 10 millimeters. Once the build platform stops moving, just send it back to home. Next, turn on manual g-code. Here you can send manual commands, as well as view the history of commands sent to the printer. But be sure to check the box to log your sent commands. So here you can see the command wasn't logged because I hadn't checked the box. And now it shows up. For projector controls, the ones you're really interested in are show and show blank. There are on-off commands you can send from here, but I haven't actually made that work in the Creation Workshop software. In order to turn the projector on and off, you have to send the manual g-code command. This may vary depending on the printer you have. Hang in there guys, this is almost done. We're finally ready to slice this model. Depending on how fast your computer is, this could take a few seconds or several minutes. Additionally, whether or not you're exporting this to the CWS file will have a big impact on the slice speed. Because exporting to the CWS will create more memory that has to be generated in the file, then your slice speed will decrease significantly. To slice, go to the top and click on the slice button. Next, it will let you select the slicing profile you want. 
Since we only have one slicing profile, we just click Slice. And just like that, our model is sliced and ready to print. In the top right corner, you can see the estimated print time. In my experience, this time is usually about 20% longer than estimated. We can go to Slice View and verify that our model has been correctly sliced. The first layer is very important and you want to make sure that the initial layer is in fact the bottom of your part. You can see we have about 2400 layers and using the scroll bar on the bottom we can look at each one. On the G-code view we can see each line of code that will be sent to the printer for all 2400 layers. The big thing to do here is verify that all the settings we chose for the slice configuration made it into the G-code. I also like to scroll down and view a couple of layers of G-code to verify that my build platform will move in the correct direction. The easiest way to do that is to make sure the lift distance at the end of the lift sequence is negative. This is the command that tells the build platform to return the model to the bottom of the vat. So here you can see during the lift sequence the model will lift up by our set distance of 1 millimeter, but then will return by only 0.95 millimeters because it reduces by the layer height of 0.05 millimeters. Alright, so our G-code looks good. Slice view looks good. Now if you want to view a slice on the projector before you start the print, there's a button in the bottom right corner that will let you preview a slice. And that's it. The last thing to do is hit the start print button. If you found this helpful or have questions, please leave a comment. This video was long because I wanted to go as in-depth as possible. Please be sure to like this video and don't forget to subscribe. If you're still fuzzy about getting the printer side of things set up or using Creation Workshop Post to do your printing, check out Step 2 of my 3D Printing Quick Start Guide. And if you want to see the time lapse of the giant rook we prepared, click the annotation. Thanks for sticking it out to the end of the video and thanks for watching.